Hello, welcome to another edition of the CNA's Opus. My name is Rich, I'm a certified nursing assistant. Um, one of the drugs that I, uh, the drug that I wanted to talk about today is called nophilin, and it's one of the older um, uh, mus mu nitrogen mustard um, chemotherapy agents. And um, one of the things about the old the older chemotherapy agents is they will kill any cell in the body. They weren't specific at all to any cell. Um, in fact, they, they would just kind of attack mainly cells that were over proliferating and for um, homeostasis in your body, some cells need to over proliferate, like the um, gastrointestinal lining or the, uh, the epithelial lining in your nasal passage or your hair. Uh, it would basically attack all those along with the cancer and kill the good with the bad right there. But uh, uh, the methylene was geared more specific um, towards melanocytes um, and melanocytes, the cancer of melanocytes is melanoma. And the way that they did this was they took the nitrogen mustard and they added l felialanine onto it. l felialanine is required uh, to produce melanin. It's, it's, like, it's required to produce melanin. Um, so they added it to the nitrogen mustard to make it more specific only to melanocytes. It's not to say that other cells in the body don't take up alpha alanine it's just to say that um, alpha alanine is more so taken up by melanocytes because its, structure, its structural function is to help with the production of melanin which again is the pigment that makes up your skin that protects you from the UV rays of the sun um, as you can see right here, I have a little diagram here. This is uh, l felialanine Right there is the benzene ring and off, off the nitrogen. And over here is a methylene group. And then up here is the amino group. That's the, the alpha carbon. And then uh, the carboxylic acid. And then uh, oxygen attached to hydrogen. I drew this amino acid in free form. I drew this acid, uh, amino acid in free form. Um, when I usually draw an amino acid, I usually draw it um, as a residue, meaning I draw it as if, as if it's attached to another amino acid. But this here, you can see it is kind of it's in its free form. It has that oxygen and its hydrogen right there. Um, and over here, that is the, the nitrogen mustard right there. So basically what happens here is it takes up the phenylalanine uh, along with the nitrogen mustard here and the nitrogen mustard will um, create these inter or intra strand cross links within the DNA so transcription and translation can't occur and it'll be would be within those melanocytes uh, uh, which, uh, which, if they have melanoma, the melanoma, the melanoma can't um, uh, proliferate, so it'll start destroying the, the melanoma because of that phenylalanine there. And if you just want to look, if you want to look at the chemistry of it, um, that's the phenylalanine over there. The nitrogen here has uh, two lone electrons. It has a pair of electrons. And it has a great, a great um, uh, electro electronegativity. So it's drawing in this carbon right here, the second carbon here. And when it does that, it'll form a covalent bond with this carbon right here. And when it does that, it'll release the 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 um, chlorine atom right here will be released as a chloride anion so that'll that'll get that'll take uh, a negative from the carbon there and this will form a covalent bond with the nitrogen right there 
and the nitrogen will become positive. So the nitrogen is now positive and it forms like this ring structure right here. At the top one, this is now a ring structure here, if you can see it. And down here, this one remains the same. This one doesn't do anything. But the electronegative uh, the, the electro -neg pull of nitrogen is so great that it actually will just take the electron back from the carbon here and it, it'll become neutral again. It'll have that lone pair of electrons right there. And this one will just simply reattach over here to its uh, original spot right here on the chain but the chlor the chlorine atom left and became a, a chloride anion so that's gone so now this carbon only has three links and it wants four so now this has a positive charge it's missing a, a, an electron here on the top chain so over here you have guanine which is one of the uh, or organic bases within uh, within DNA is guanine, and there he, up here is the pyrimidine ring with uh, modifications to make the purine. This, the whole thing is the purine, but up here is a modified uh, pyrimidine. One of the modifications uh, uh, um, is they took out the double bond that was right here in a pure purine, uh, pure, pure pyrimidine. But the whole thing here is, is a purine. Guanine is a purine. So um, this over here off the um, primidine is um, an imodazole ring. This is the imodazole ring right here. And the reason it's called an, an imodazole ring is it has an amide bond right there. And the amide bond is just a bond uh, between a, a double bond between a nitrogen and a carbon. So an amide bond is just a double bond between a nitrogen and a carbon and that's the reason it's called an imodazole ring which is attached to a modified uh, pyrimidine and the two together make a purine. So this is a, pur a purine and this modified purine here is guanine. I got not stumbling on my words too much here. Anyway, this nitrogen down here is attached to the, nucle uh, the next nucleotide, the next um, chain in, in, in the double helix. This one here is called N7. It's kind of sitting there by itself. It has three bonds that, that are holding it in place, but again, it has a pair of alone electrons. This, because it became positive, is going to go want to go to the negative uh, nitrogen right there. So then you have this attached to this, and then you have a lone pair of electrons right here, and this uh, this carbon down here will actually do the same thing that happened up here. It'll get pulled in here. And then uh, this chloride, uh, uh, I'm sorry, chlorine atom will be released to become a chloride anion. Um, and this will come in here, form a covalent bond with this nitrogen. And then uh, the, the nitrogen has such a great pull that it'll just pull that, that electron into it. And then this... Um, this uh, this this uh, um, this uh, methyl group will go back to its its original spot here, but it'll be positive because it only has three links right there. The carbon wants four, so it'll, it'll have a positive charge, and that will want to attach to another nitrogen on another guanine. So now you have guanines that are linking together, either cross-linking, uh, inter-cross-linking, inter 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 which is um, guanine on this side, the guanine on this side, or inter-cross-linking, inter um, which is on just the one side. And that'll happen 
within the malignant melanocytes um, st to stop uh, RNA polymerase complex 2 from, from making the messenger RNA to produce the protein and it'll stop uh, DNA polymerase from copying the DNA because basically you made a wall there you're making a wall so RNA polymerase complex 2 comes in and it hits this wall and it can't go any further or same thing with uh, DNA polymerase it, it can't copy the DNA because it will hit that wall so there's no replication and there's no uh, there's no trans trans there's no transcription or translation and also it causes um, damage to the DNA so uh, ataxia T longitasia mutated and ataxia T longitated um, mutated and RAD3 related proteins which are two enzymes that kind of go around the double helix and look for errors if they're still available and they're not mutated and they're not completely gone they're part of the p53 pathway so if they're still there and they're still if the p53 pathway is still alive uh, p53 um, eventually uh, the, the what I just said will phosphorylate checkpoint kinase 1 and checkpoint kinase 2 and or and or not both ends and or and that will go and phosphorylate uh, the protein p53 and then p53 will form a tetramer and that'll end uh, that'll uh, create a transcription factor which will start producing um, certain proteins that are either for cellular repair and if it can't repair it um, than for apoptosis, uh, but usually in most cancers, the p53 uh, is in pathway is mutated in some form, or there's a complete loss of function of p53, and that's uh, pretty bad news. Um, so that's it for right now. Rich CNA, see you later.